So the painting captures the terror and the dynamism of the defence of this position by B Company, 2nd Battalion, the 24th. It's probably the most famous painting of the Anglo-Zulu War. Alphonse de Neuville's defence of Rourke's Drift is beloved by anybody who loves British military history. But how well do you know this painting? For example, why is Lieutenant Chard firing a Martini Henry rifle? Who's the big chap carrying his wounded comrade? And most importantly of all, where the hell did this dog come from? <coughs> well, in today's video, I'm joined by Brad Manera. He's the curator of the Anzac Memorial in Sydney, and he's a real expert on the painting. So guys, stay tuned till the end of the video to find out how this painting ended up in Australia, and also a bit more information about the artist himself, Alphonse de Neuville. As we look from right to left, we can see uh, John Chard uh, at the wall being handed some cartridges. He's using a Martini Henry rifle. Now, he's an officer. He would only have had a sword and a revolver at the start of the action. But um, James Langley Dalton, the commissariat, when he was shot through the chest and shoulder, he handed his rifle to Chard. So here's Chard using Langley Dalton's rifle as he stands at the north wall. And beyond them is a, a veil of white smoke because, the, you know, before uh, before nitrocellulose powders, every time you pull the trigger, you've got a puff of white smoke and you can see the amount of fire that the British are delivering at the attacking Zulus. And, uh, but the Zulus are on the other side of a wall of mealy bags and at the base of a, of, a, uh, of a rock ledge. So although the British have got a parapet that's only chest height, the Zulus have got a, a two and three metre climb to get at the British. So this is one of the great accuracies of the painting is that Duneville has clearly spoken to veterans to understand how they are defending that wall. And halfway along, you can see a, a soldier in a slouch hat in the uniform of the Natal native contingent. That was a Swiss named Ferdinand Schies, another Victoria Cross winner, and he's thrusting his bayonet over the, the wall. Closer to us, you can see George Smith with that remarkable beard, his white cork helmet, uh, his long dark coat, and his haversack, handing out packets of bullets to the men on the firing line. At his feet, we've got James Langley Dalton. Now, Langley Dalton was the acting assistant commissary, but he was an ex-infantry senior NCO with a feeling for field engineering. And uh, he was a veteran of the Ninth Frontier War. And so it was his initiative that created those initial walls of mealy bags that were an essential part of the defence of the mission station. He was shot early on in the action and uh, so he's being attended to, but he hasn't fallen back too far. He's standing there encouraging the lads while uh, Surgeon James Henry Reynolds is patching his, uh, his grievous wound in his shoulder. And of course, right in the center of the painting is Reynolds' terrier, Dick. Du Neville must have spoken to Reynolds and Reynolds said, yes, I had my terrier with me. Uh, and so clearly he's uh, become the focus of the painting. Behind the dog by several meters is the commander of B Company, 2nd Battalion, the 24th Regiment, and that's Gonville Bromhead, another uh, to be awarded the Victoria Cross for his command of his company during the defence of Rourke's Drift. And as we move across the painting to the, to the left, you can see the hospital on fire and the troops helping soldiers uh, get the, the, the wounded and the sick out of the burning hospital. And one soldier is uh, wearing a slouch hat, a grey slouch hat with a red hat band. Now, that's indicative of the, of the Natal native contingent. However, the artist uh, had read the letters by Henry Lugg of the Natal Mounted Police. And Lugg describes himself helping carry a, uh, a sick uh, patient from the hospital. And so, de Neville has identified the man in the slouch hat as Henry Lugg, but he's got his uniform wrong. Lugg should be wearing the dark uniform of the Natal Mounted Police, but instead he's wearing the uniform of the Natal Native Contingent. The only other person that was identified to Du, to du Neville in the painting is the sharpshooter on the south wall. Uh, and that was a fellow named uh, Private James Dunbar. And he had stood beside Chard 
at the first Zulu attack. Chard says Dunbar was an extraordinary shot with a rifle as one of the first of the Indunas rode up on a horse leading the Zulus during the first attack. Dunbar shot him out of the saddle and Dunbar spent the rest of the day shooting at Zulu marksmen who were firing into the compound from the slopes of Shiane or, or uh, the Oscarburg range that rises up to the south of the mission station at Rourke's Drift. So the painting captures the terror and the dynamism of the defence of this position by B Company 2nd Battalion, the 24th, uh, an action that resulted in the award of 11 Victoria Crosses and five Distinguished Conduct Medals. Um, it's a classic image that really was a signature of the Redcoat Army that Australia wanted to identify with in the 19th century. So what research did De Neuville do to make sure his painting was accurate? He, he read every piece of correspondence he could get his hands on uh, relating to the Zulu War and so he was really very, very well informed uh, when he composed the work. Particularly one of his principal informants, well he had three principal informants who were veterans of the defence of Rourke's Drift and they were the post commander, John Rouse Marriott Chard, by that stage a brevet major with a Victoria Cross on his chest. Another Victoria Cross winner from that action was uh, James Henry Reynolds, the surgeon, uh, and also the Reverend George Smith, Ammunition Smith, the man that had walked the lines handing out bullets to the men on the firing lines, um, demanding, don't swear lads, just shoot them. Uh, you know, it's, and, and so Du Neuville having a chance to speak with those people, you can see the choices that they made, the veterans, the heroes that they chose in his work. And so as we look at the painting, it's a huge narrative. So what about de Neuville himself? Who was he? A French combat veteran, survivor of the Franco-Prussian War uh, as, a, as a junior unit commander. If, if you ever get a chance to visit the Museum of the Grande Armée in Paris, uh, you will see a range of Alphonse de Neuville's work. He really had uh, a gift for capturing the the, the intensity and the terror and the, 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 the thrill, if you like, of close combat. Um, he creates images of small groups of soldiers facing each other and um, with, with, with the grand battle narrative in the background. So his works on the Franco-Prussian War are quite prolific. But, but how did the painting come about? How did this French war veteran end up being the artist for the Anglo-Zulu war painting? I, th I, I would love to know what the thought processes were uh, behind choosing an artist for this work. As you know, the British Army had suffered a massive, massive disaster at Isan Luana uh, in January of 1879, uh, the loss of a brigade strength unit by some 20 to 25,000 Zulus. And yet a few hours later, a Zulu force of four to four and a half thousand attack a tiny British garrison, 140 soldiers in the mission station at Rourke's Drift. And so it becomes the redemption story, if you like. The, the loss of a major portion of Chelmsford's army uh, is suddenly redeemed by this extraordinary statement of gallantry by a handful of British soldiers. 11 Victoria Crosses award, awarded, five Distinguished Conduct Medals. These people become media stars. So that's what the public wants to focus on. And two of the great artists of the period are commissioned to make works. Initially, the Fine Arts Society, based in London and Edinburgh, uh, commission uh, Alphonse de Neuville, a French artist who already has an established reputation for making combat art, um, and they approach him in April of 1879. Meanwhile, another artist, Lady Butler, you know, the creator of the great Napoleonic works and the Crimean works, uh, is also approached and both of them create works called The Defence of Rourke's Drift. Uh, Alphonse de Neville produces his work first. Um, Queen Victoria, on reflection, prefers Lady Butler. 
<laughs> and so Lady Butler's work is in the Royal Collection. The, the Alphonse de Neville's work, it went on display in London and within weeks, 50,000 people had paid to see it. The, the Fine Arts Society was, uh, their, their, their faith in that choice was repaid a thousandfold. And within 12 months, the Art Gallery of New South Wales was begging to buy the painting, and, uh, and, which they did, and that's how it came to Australia. So that pivotal image of the Zulu War has been on display at the Art Gallery of New South Wales for 140 years. So if you love Victorian military history, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a film. I've got loads of stuff coming up in the near future, including an entire series on the Indian mutiny of 1857 to 1859. If you like this era, you will love that. All right, guys, see you soon.